Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Today we have another lab session for the Encore exam, the 300, 354 one. Um, this is something that I do here in KB Trainings just to share with you and uh, it's not a course, uh, but it can help if, you, if you're really following through. Uh, today we're going to work on Ether channels. And um, if you want to know more on the Ether channel, of course, you go on the Cisco's website. They have a lot of things and uh, you have a you have you have a huge documentation here it's explaining you exactly what is the channel but to give you an overview of what it is if you don't and if you if you are still trying to get to know all these things i have a cisco ccna course on kbtrainings.com and um, if you are watching this on youtube please like the video to encourage me to make more of this and also subscribe to the channel for more fun if you like it but if you are on kbtrainings.com, that's fine. Uh, thank you for that. If you are not, go on kbtrainings.com forward slash encore. I'm still working on a forum uh, where we can discuss. Uh, it's going to be ready pretty soon. I'm very busy these days. Um, yeah, so what is Ether Channel? Ether Channel is just the fact of bundling. I mean, it, it's a bundle of two or up to eight um, links together in a single logical link that is called a port channel here on the Cisco. Why do we do that? Why do we have to do that? Um, one of the main reason is for redundancy. We want to have redundancy if we, we are in a huge campus and um, you don't want this link to go down. You want this to be up all the time. And in this case, we grabbed four different links. We put them together under a single, um, a single logical link and if we had like one gig for example one gig per link and we put them together this doesn't make a big four gig link no this is this is still four uh, by one gig but at least all the links are activated at the same time all the links are forwarding at the same time if we didn't put them in a bundle like this spanning tree protocol would block uh, would just leave one of them forwarding and block all the others because we want to avoid a loop in our topology. But in this instance, if we have these four links bundled in a single logical port channel um, interface, it's considered by spanning tree protocol as a single link and all the links will be forwarding. And as I said, it's not going to be a four gig link. It's still going to be, it's still uh, four by one gig so every link or every session utilize a certain link you then need to know how to balance your traffic across those different different links because if you are if you have let's say just a single computer um on your on your switch that single computer if you are using maybe just its ip or its mac address for load balancing that's going to be using that single port all the time and all the other three will remain unused and that's a waste of bandwidth. So what you can do is balance depending on your situation. If you have a single server going to many, many different destinations, you can balance, um, the, the, you can balance the load um, utilizing the MAC address of the destination, for example or no not the mac address the ip of the destination because the mac address will probably be the same thing if you are i mean whatever yeah so you can balance the load between them and you can do many things so for a port channel you can put up to eight links in it and for, for on a single switch you can do up you can create up to 48 um port channel or 48 either channels uh, what else can i say on this so it's good for spanning tree. Uh, you get uh, more sessions uh, flowing at the same time. You also um, you get redundancy in case one of the links goes down. And uh, yeah, it's just just a pretty cool thing. So this link will be in a course. And if you are just if you are in Cap if you are on just scroll down and you can see this. Read all of this. It's not hard. So what are different modes that you can use to create Ether channels? The first mode is the on mode. You can just turn it on. You turn it on. It's like hard coding it to be on all the time. The second thing is that you can use 
uh, protocols. We have two main protocols. The first one is Cisco proprietary. It's called PAGP. And you have two modes under that protocol. You have the auto and the desirable mode. If you are on the auto, just like, uh, what was the other thing? Just like the trunking. If you are on the auto um, and you have auto on one end and auto on the other end, the, you will not have an issue channel because auto doesn't initiate. Auto waits for the other uh, party to initiate. And if you have auto and desirable, you'll have a, you'll have an ether channel. Or if you have desirable and desi desirable, you have ether channel. Uh, that's for PAGP. You can also use LACP, which is open standard. For I don't know if it's IEEE or um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It's not important. So if you use LACP, you have two modes. You have active and passive. Passive and passive are shy. Nobody's gonna make the move. If you wanna, if you want it to work, you do passive and active, or active and active. All right. So right away, let's jump into our topology, and we are going to test this out. All right. So we have our two switches uh, configured and ready. Switch one and switch two. Okay. So right now, right now, switch one and switch two are connected with these two links. And these should be trunks because I set them to dynamic desirable, all the ports. So these should be trunks. And uh, oops, if we go under switch two, for example, show interface trunk, we have two trunks. If we go here, show interface trunk, we have two trunks. Uh, and if we do show show spanning tree with for VLAN one, you can see that. Or oh, maybe I was looking at different ports. Okay, that's fine. You can see that um, the gigabit zero slash zero is forwarding, but zero slash one is blocked. And if we go under switch one, I mean, I think switch one, all of them should be forwarding because switch one is the root. So the root here is different from this. So switch one is the root and all the ports should be forwarding. So this is what we don't want. We don't want one link to be wasted like this. That's why we create ether channel. Show spanning tree. All right, so VLAN one, you can see that all the ports are forwarding. So to create an ether channel, what we do is we go under config and we grab zero slash zero to one. No, interface range. And what we do is um, channel group, um, we give it number one. As I said, you can create up to 48 um, port channels and uh, you can have up to eight interfaces per channel. So mode, what mode do we want to use here? Maybe PHGP. So I'm going to do this as auto. So the other side will be desirable. And that's it. The port channel interface, port channel one is crea uh, created. I can verify it by doing show ether channel um, summary. This shows us that we have one um, ether channel, which is a SD, which means switching. Where is it? Yeah, which is a layer two, and a D, which means down. It's currently down because the other side is not configured yet. And these two ports are part of this. Um, ether channel we're using PAGP and there are I which means standalone okay they are now standalone in the ether channel so we go on port 2 I mean switch 2 and conf um, interface range gig, uh, gig 0 slash 0 to 1 we do um, channel group one um, mode desirable all right so we're going to see a bunch of things the port channel one is going to be created the interfaces are going to be added to that port channel one 
and it's currently up if we do show it's a channel uh, so it's a channel summary we can see that it's now up so s as in layer 2 u as in in use and the ports are in a bundle in the port channel so bundled in the port channel that's the p that we have here and if we do show spanning tree we can see that even though this is not a this is not the root all the ports are forwarding including our logical port which is port channel one and uh, yeah same thing on this side show ether channel i should have said summary summary it's in use and these two ports are participating and uh, if we do show spanning tree, you know exactly what's going to happen. So um, it, that was so easy. Yeah, it just, uh, it's just that simple. And uh, this is for a layer 2 ether channel. If you want to do a, a layer 3 ether channel, you need to use the no switch port command. But if you use the no switch port command at the uh, port channel level, it's going to flash out. the, the that, At least that's what's happening to me in this version. It's going to flash out. The, the members of the, the the port channel and you need to go um, to those to go in those interfaces and uh, make sure that you add them to the port channel uh, let's try that if we go under interface po1 and we do no switch port look at what happening now uh, if I do show ether channel summary again they're gone no protocol no nothing so that's why um, the good way to do it. Oh, I didn't add an IP to PO1. Let me give it an IP 10.0.0.1. No IP address. And uh, with the default subnet mask. Okay. Uh, oops, I shouldn't have done that interface range uh, gigabit 0 slash 0 to 1 uh, we're going to do no switch port first okay and then we are going to add them to the ether uh, to the port channel uh, group one mode this time let's use LACP so I'm going to set this as passive And now if we do show ether channel summary you can see that this is now a layer 3 and these ports are down and this one is down as well maybe because the other side is not configured yet let's go there so i'm just going to do on this one i still have uh the ether channel just says configured before yeah it's still there but uh yeah, it's up actually, but there's nothing on the other end. But it's a layer two. What's happening? Yeah, they just went down because they just detected what happened on the other end. Okay, so what I have to do is go under the interfaces 0 slash 0 to 1 and do no switch port let's see what happened to the port channel the, port, uh, the ports go up and down do show ether channel summary yep so those ports were changed they are now flushed out of the the port channel one so what I have to do is, again, still in this port, I need to do channel group 1 mode active. Okay, it's refusing because I already have a port channel created 
and I'm trying to add layer 3 ports on a layer 2 Ether channel. So what I have to do is go under PO1 and do a no switch port there. So now I can come under my interfaces and run the command. All right, now it's working. If I do show Ether channel summary, we have it and it's up. LCP currently not enabled on the remote port. LCP not enabled. I think I did LCP. Let's see. I have LCP here. What? What are they talking about? Oh, maybe it's down. Okay. Yeah. So we just go under interface P01 and do a shut no shut. And uh, it should come up. I I need to do a shut no shut on 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 both ends. Okay. Let's do the verification. Yep, now it's up. Layer three in use. I can even give it an IP. Ten zero zero dot two with the default. Oops, I always forget. Add Let me try to ping 10.0.0.1. ARP is going to fail. All right, so we have a layer 3 ether channel created between uh, between switch 1 and switch 2. One thing that I want to show you is how to um, configure load balancing because as I said, you need to know depending on your network or your design, you need to know how to balance the traffic between the two. So the load balancing is uh, configured at the uh, global level so you do port channel um, load balancing and then you have these different options to choose from you can balance using um, the destination IP destination Mac source and destination IP source and destination uh, destination Mac source IP or source Mac so these are the options that you have and uh, when you do that your links will be utilized more efficiently what else can we see here yeah we can do on on one end and leave lscp on the other end that i leave it up to you now it's um it's your time to play with it do whatever scenario comes to your mind be creative try to see um how you can tweak it around and play with it and that's how you become good and again don't forget to read the documentation from cisco uh, not everything is at your level. If you see that something is above you or it's not really for the exam, you just skip it and that's it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, like the video and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Uh, thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, you like if you are on YouTube, but on KB Trainings, you don't have to like anything. Thank you and bye.